Good morning. morning. Good to see some folks remember to set their clocks back. So let's see, the other folks will be coming in an hour, right? Or is it the other way they were here? Let's see here. They'll be here in an hour. So we'll get done really fast so it's empty when they get here, right? So yes, thankful that you guys... Uh, Remember the time change? Lindsay started setting the clocks back about 7 last night. I did not abide by that, and I went to bed early. So, which is good, because Theodore got up early. He didn't, he didn't abide by the time change either. But Lindsay and the kids stayed back, because my folks are coming to Jamestown, so she, they're going to be meeting up with them for the craft show up in Jamestown. And I hope to meet up with them at some point when I get back as well. Uh, we have lots of announcements on the back. Speaking of back, my back has been a little screwy this week, so if I'm moving kind of funny, that's why. Um, but standing is actually better than sitting, so I don't mind standing up here today. Plus, I got this to hold me up as well. And worst case scenario, if I fall out, Rick said he can, he's got experience in walking on people's backs. So if you see me laying down here, Rick, just jump on there and start walking around. Uh, because of that, though, I'm going to have to postpone the Bible study that we would have had after the service today because, as I mentioned, sitting is the most painful of the three, and I've got to save that amount of sitting for the drive back. So, But we'll get to that next time I'm back for sure. And then next Sunday on the 11th, the UMW are going to meet right after the service, and Deb has the program, and Sue is the hostess. And the food pantry is running very low. And this is their busy time of year, so between them running low and this being the busy time of year, uh, please bring your donations to the church, and then they will take them to the food pantry. And if you prefer, you can always use a donation of money. June Bowder is moved down to Ashley, and she would really love to receive some cards or letters or visitors. So if you're in the Ashley area, please consider stopping by and visiting June. And if you don't plan on going down to Ashley, uh, her address is listed there. Drop a message to her. She'd really appreciate that. And for all your pastoral needs, uh, just contact Jody there, and then she can coordinate with whoever is closest in the area to get in touch with those folks. Are there any other announcements that anyone would like to make? Rick? What was the date on that? November 18th. November 18th is the Lions Turkey Dinner, and there will be more information to follow on that, so start getting your appetites ready. I've been expanding my stomach slowly each day in preparation. Uh, actually, I found that the more I've been home, though, the more I eat, just because you're just bored and there's not much you can do but lay there. So that's not helpful either, though, if they say for the back to sit around and eat not helpful. Uh, I didn't really do anything specific to hurt my back. Uh, I jump roped for 120 seconds and that's about the only thing we could figure it was. did uh, four rounds of 20 seconds of jump roping and I told the chiropractor that and I got in trouble. He says, he says jump roping, running, any kind of anything with impact you can't do and I asked him for how long he said forever. So I'm having to uh, deal with that uh, realization this week, and 
have to change some things up that I do that I can no longer do anymore. So, uh, but I've been doing some traction, and uh, today's is, each day has been a little bit better than the last day, so that's been helpful. So I've been doing the, the spine med therapy they call it, and then they put me on the stib machine after that, and that loosens things up too. So uh, each day it's getting a little bit better. All right, uh, do we have any birthdays or anniversaries to celebrate? All right. Wow. So she had her first birthday. She had her first birthday. The actual birthday. That's how they came up with that name, I'm told. Oh, there we go. I officially became an old Old. Old what? Old duffer disease. I think that's what I'm suffering from. <laughs> Happy birthday, birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. God bless you and keep you. Happy birthday to you. All right. And I see. And you're not in a sling. She had to one up you, I hear. They gave me an air belt, too, that I'm supposed to wear, but I didn't. <laughs> okay, please join me in an opening prayer. Dear God, thank you for this day. Thank you for safe passage to bring us here today. Thankful for safe homes to travel from, and thank you for this place where we can come together and worship you. Lord, we just ask for your continual guidance and your wisdom as we go forward worshiping you. In your name we pray. Amen. Okay, our praise chorus is listed in our bulletin, The Steadfast Love of the Lord. Please stand and greet those around you.
Okay, please stand if able and join us in our opening hymn found on page 369, Blessed Assurance. Blessed Assurance, Jesus is mine. Please remain standing for our responsive reading as found in your bulletin. I'll read the light portion. I invite you to read the darkened portion. And the God of all grace, who called you to this eternal glory in Christ, after you have suffered a little while, will himself restore you and make you strong, firm, and steadfast. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. God did this because he wanted you Gentiles to understand his wonderful and glorious mystery. And the mystery is that Christ lives in you, and he is your hope of sharing in God's glory. Therefore, comfort one another with these words. God bless the reading of his word. You may be seated. And our hymn can be found on page 380, and we'll read the odd verses, 1, 3, and 5. There is within my heart a melody. within my heart a melody Jesus whispers sweet and low Fear not I am with thee, peace 
We've come to the point in the service where we can share our joys and concerns. My parents and younger sister are coming to visit us today, so that's a joy. Please join me in a silent prayer followed by a pastoral prayer and we'll end with the Lord's Prayer. Dear God, we come together today to worship you, to worship you with thanks. Thanks for all the blessings that you give us. Lord, you give us this place where we can worship you, and you give us these people to come together as one in order to worship you. Lord, we're thankful for the opportunities that you present us every day, opportunities to spread your message and to practice thanksgiving. Lord, with that thanksgiving comes the so many blessed things that you give us, things that we often overlook because we're so used to them. Lord, you're so good to us. You give us family. You give us friends. You give us safe places to live and safe community and a safe state. Lord, we're thankful for healthy beings and and negative results from biopsies. Lord, we're thankful for those that come to visit us and uplift us. Lord, we're thankful that even during times where we're sick or we're experiencing some sort of ailment, that you are with us every step of the way. Lord, we're thankful for the 
changing seasons in our world and all that comes with it. And Lord, along with the many blessings that you give us each and every day, we also have things that bring us concern. And we're thankful that you can be with everybody, but it helps us to articulate the concerns that are on our hearts. Lord, we ask you to be with Larry and Halen and Gerard and Steve and Zelda as they recovering from their various injuries. Lord, we ask you to watch over Kurt and Brad and Jerry, and Rachel and Don and Julie, Arlen. Be with June as she has made her home now down in Ashley. Pray for Audrey, Gary, and Kent and Norman. Lord, many things go unsaid, but we can rest easy knowing that you are aware of our every thoughts and our every desire. And Lord, we come to you today in the way that we've been taught, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. At this time, I invite our ushers to come forward for a morning offering. Dear God, we're so thankful for the opportunities to use our resources to help expand your kingdom. And Lord, we're so thankful for the blessings that you give us as we praise every gift and every giver. In your name we pray. Amen. Our scripture reading and message today comes from Romans 15. And you may not know this, but I suspect you are. It's voting season. And even in my house, our seven-year-old Bryn knows the candidates. Now that should be a good thing. Having someone so young be so well-informed. I don't remember knowing so much about candidates when I was seven. However, that isn't exactly what she's informed of. Instead of knowing the good things about the candidates, instead, she's constantly being inundated with constant negativity about everyone that's running for office. It's from billboards, signs, things in the mail, radio, television commercials. Her and the rest of us have been subjected to a lot of negative information, haven't we? Somewhere along the way, it became less about what these various candidates can do and more about things that they may be doing wrong. That seems to be the focus. And when we hear nothing but negative about somebody, instead of positives, 
there tends to be a lot of less loss of interest. Suddenly you don't care about any of it, as nobody is sounding very ethical. And in the previous chapter of Romans, before chapter 15, Paul had dealt with the subject of moral indifference. And he continues in this chapter. Tensions had arisen between the converts from Judaism and those from paganism, and Paul was pleading for peaceful relations between these Jewish and Gentile Christians. That sounds pretty familiar. The world seems full of unpeaceful relations and things of that nature, especially during election season. There's a ton of it. And our house has become a joke to hide one of the mailers where someone else will find it just because it's so ridiculous to us. It seems that every turn in some message, somebody is putting somebody else down, no matter the political race. Is that how we want to live? Is that how we should live? In verse 1, it says, We who are strong ought to bear with the failings of the weak and not to please ourselves. Those who are strong or with full liberty regarding things that are morally indifferent are not to please themselves by selfishly asserting their rights. I'm guessing without even reading that scripture, most of us know that. And we know that because how it makes us feel. When that type of behavior is happening, it just doesn't feel very good, does it? Instead, we should all treat those weak others, as it says there, with kindness and consideration. Not delight in getting uh, or putting people down. And Paul says in verse 2, Each of us should please our neighbors for their good to build them up. Don't live to please ourselves. Live to please your neighbor. Or do him good to build them up. Building others up is what Christians do. Isn't that what Jesus taught us? I cannot remember a time where instead of building up or helping somebody or saying something good, I can never think of a time where Jesus was maliciously tearing somebody down. He was always building them up. Isn't that a good example for us to follow? In verse 3, even Christ did not please himself, but, as it is written, the insults of those who insult you have fallen on me. Jesus gave us the example. He lived to please his Father, not himself. Jesus said, the insults of those who insult you have fallen on me. Meaning that he was so completely taken up with God's honor that when somebody insulted God, he took it personally, as a personal insult to himself. And that's exactly what happens when somebody tears somebody else down. Tearing down another of God's children. Jesus takes it as a personal insult. Have you ever torn someone else down, either by action or words? Most of us probably have at one time or another, either on purpose or by accident. But that doesn't have to be us. That doesn't need to be who we are if we follow Christ's example. How, though? With everybody having a voice in today's world, instant access 
social media. There's a lot of opportunity to put other people down. And a lot of people are taking up that opportunity. How can we avoid doing that or being that? How can we be the people? How can we be the Christians that we are meant to be? In verse 4, For everything that was written in the past was written to teach us, so that through the endurance taught in the Scriptures and the encouragement they provide, we might have hope. Everything that was written in the past. Psalms, Proverbs. The Bible's full of guidance on how we should live. How we can conduct ourselves. We've been hearing a lot about it in our Bible studies. They were all written to teach us. Now Paul and or the other authors of the Bible didn't directly write that to us here today, but they do contain invaluable lessons for us. What problems are you having right now? I'm up here sweating, it's not even hot in here. What conflicts or troubles or other tribulations are you going through right now? These scriptures and the others in the Bible teach us to be steadfast and give us hope, which sustains us through the waves of life. And life is full of a lot of waves. The hope that the Lord will see us through And he gives us even more than that to use on a daily basis. Verse 5. May the God who gives endurance and encouragement give you the same attitude of mind toward each other that Christ Jesus had. What example did Jesus set for us? How tired are you guys? I don't mean because of the time change. I like to think that each day I'm working towards being a better person. That's all of our goal, right? That kind of self-awareness that we have, that kind of desire to be more like Jesus, can be pretty challenging. Day after day, trying to be a better person. And in the scripture, Paul's saying that the God who gives endurance and encouragement will enable the strong and the weak. So good news. Whether you're feeling strong or you're feeling weak, God has you covered. So that should cover everybody in here. You can live peacefully with others with the same attitude of the mind toward each other that Christ Jesus had. Why does he do that? Verse 6, So that with one mind, one voice, you may glorify the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. We can all be united as one. And to me, when I see united, or with one mind and one voice, it sounds a lot like peace to me. We were just talking about some conflict in the Middle East before the service. Imagine it united. Doesn't that sound nice? Paul imagined a world where saved Jews and saved Gentiles were worshiping the Lord with one voice. 
Imagine a world where each of us is worshiping the Lord with one voice instead of using that voice to put others down. Or splitting the world instead of uniting it. Sounds pretty amazing. Where do we start? Where can we start? Verse 7, accept one another. Then, just as Christ accepted you in order to bring praise to God. At the charge conference last, what was that, Sunday? Last Sunday? This week's a blur. Uh, the D.S. Culver shared a lot of good stories from his various experiences in the ministry, as did some others that were present there for the conference. And one that stuck out to me was a story of a church, I think it was in Center, North Dakota. I may have that mixed up because we heard a few stories that were similar. And they had about five people in this church that were attending. Five people. Makes us look full in here. Then a family that didn't look like them, or many others in North Dakota for that matter, happened into that church. Instead of turning them away because they were different, they brought them in and accepted them. That's where it started, and now that church has more people attending than there is population in that town. That's pretty amazing. The world is full of differences among God's people. But despite this, our scripture here tells us that we can accept one another just as Christ accepted you. You know, I've said it before and it remains true. I often wonder how I found myself in this position. Despite any lack of credentials that I have, two things happened. First, God was nudging me repeatedly, many times. Sometimes it was a two by four in the face. Then came you folks. You accepted me. I was scared to death the first time I came down here. Didn't know a soul. And you guys brought me in and accepted me. And that can be across the board for everybody that we meet. We don't receive based on denominational affiliation, spiritual maturity, or social status. We accept those whom Christ accepted in order to bring praise to God. Verse 8, For I tell you that Christ has become a servant of the Jews on behalf of God's truth so that the promises made to the patriarchs might be confirmed. Paul explains here and goes on to explain that Christ ministered to both Jew and Gentile. And so can we. Our hearts can be big enough to include both. We can accept all kinds of God's children even those that may be different than us. Verse 9, And moreover, that the Gentiles might glorify God for his mercy. As it is written, Therefore I will praise you among the Gentiles. I will sing the praises of your name. We have tons of opportunity to spread the gospel the world over. Just think of the voice that everybody has nowadays, with technology. And we can spread that to everyone despite the color of their skin or their religious or political beliefs. 
or their social or economic statuses or the way they look. Gentiles, Jews, Democrats, Republicans, liberals, conservatives, independents, people from the East Coast, the West Coast, down South, up North, Midwesterners, Millennials, everyone, no matter where they're from, the world over. Verses 10, 11, and 12, again it says, Rejoice, you Gentiles, with his people. And again, praise the Lord, all you Gentiles. Let all the people extol him. And again, Isaiah says, The root of Jesse will spring up, one who will arise to rule over the nations. In him the Gentiles will hope. The point here is that the Gentiles would share in the privileges of the Messiah and his gospel. So, what opportunities will you have to share the gospel with others? What opportunities do you already have? It can be just a phone call away. What opportunities do you have to share your love of Christ with others? Maybe it's a text message, an email. Maybe it's going to be at the gas station after the service today. What opportunities do you have? Verse 13 May the God of hope fill you with all the joy and peace as you trust in him, so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Paul closes this section with kind blessing. He prays that the God who gives hope will fill us with all the joy and peace. And here's what we need to do. Trust in him. Is it right there in the middle? Trust in him. This prayer is pretty apt for all of us. Those that overflow with hope have no time to quarrel over all that extra baloney. You don't have time for it because you're overflowing with hope. And the more we spend our time building others up, the less time we're going to spend tearing others down. And the more we operate our daily life with Christ as the model, the more our world is going to become unified. One hope. One common hope can be our unifying force to make this life Christian life. That wonderful dream that we have of peace and hope starts no further than within each and every one of us. It starts with us. And who here couldn't use some more hope in their lives? Now, whether you're starting for the first time or starting over again, let's all of us start now, today. Let's spend our time, our energy, and our resources to build others up on all we do so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our closing hymn can be found on page 368. Let's stand. My hope is built, and we'll do verses 1, 2, and 3. Jesus.
God has given us so many wonderful opportunities to give hope to others around us. With that hope, that overflowing hope, you can be the hope in someone else's life through the power of the Holy Spirit.